sound. We're good for sound. We're good for sound. Now I'm going to call the meeting to order. We have a quorum of the Government Access Television Commission. And I'd like to welcome for the camera, for the record, we have guests from Soundview Community Media here tonight with us. And why don't we introduce ourselves just for the camera. Okay. Tom Castellot, President of Soundview. I'm Johnny Kay, Director of Technology at Soundview. And I'm Sheila McCreven, Chair of GATCOM. I'm uh, Dale Clift, and I'm, I don't know if I should talk to the camera or not. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm, uh, I'm legal counsel for Soundview from the law firm of Stieg and Clift. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I'm Teresa Burbonner, and I'm vice chair of vice yeah, chair, or vice chair, of chair secretary. and slash secretary of GATCOM. Mm -hmm. Okay. Great. Who are you going to introduce yourself? I'm Pua Ford. I'm the part-time coordinator for Woodbridge Government Access Television. Jonathan First, member of GATCOM. Okay. So uh, the first order of business is approval of minutes. If we're done with production programming, preliminary discussion regarding the DPU decision with guests from Soundview Community Media. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we did, um, we've talked just a little bit about trying to come up with uh, some kind of agreement and I think there's kind of a two-pronged set of questions for us. There's both the content question but also the scheduling question. So can I ask you for an update on, on where you are with working out scheduling with town specific versus regional? And if you could explain mm -hmm. it for our camera a little bit, I think there's some confusion as to whether um, the DPU decision means that we will only have a regional channel or whether there will still be some instances of, of town specific. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, as far as the channel go, and we'll talk about scheduling, it is a regional channel. 79 is a regional channel. However, towns that have the desire to have blocks of time for their programming to be disseminated from a municipal location or your, your INET location, that is possible. And that's what we would like to negotiate and work with you on. So there are blocks of time um, that can be available. Um, as far as content and programming, really the towns own the programs and they control the programs. We don't control content nor right. that. We just we're just the vehicle to disseminate that program out to the subscribers in the six towns that we cover. Okay? So I hope that clarifies that. Yeah. On th there's a, the second point is uh, we have already uh, had discussions and we've had some very good success with Fairfield, Bridgeport, Stratford. We are trying to set up meetings with Orange and Milford at the moment and today we start with, with Woodbridge so we're, we're happy to see that. We did draft, which just came out, we sent out on Friday and uh, Sheila, I don't know if you got your copy yet but I hope you have. I did, yeah. Um, I haven't had a chance to really look at it. A draft of a suggested proposal for our incentive award program. The DPUC has requested that Soundview have a incentive program for the for towns and organizations in the franchise area. And the purpose of that incentive is to increase uh, increase local programming and to improve the quality of the program that goes out on the, the education and government channels in particular. And what the department has asked Soundview to do is to set aside $60,000 for that pers for that purpose, so and, and Soundview will make the decision on how that award program will happen. Um, we did have we had a preliminary um, award program that we just sent out, and we're asking for input from all the towns and the cable advisory council, and I think we're asking for that to come back to us by the first of February, mm -hmm. and then from that we can look <coughs> at the input to make sure that we're on the right track. And ideally, we would like to have a final uh, incentive award program completed so that it can go before the Soundview Board of Directors. They meet in late March so that they can approve it. And once that's approved, um, well, then we, we can take applications. We also enclosed a draft of an application form. Um, now, the DPUC has predicated the award program on having all the six towns complete their scheduling program. So the funds are in escrow at Cablevision, and once the schedules are completed, then uh, the DPUC will then, or we have to notify the DPUC that the schedules are completed and the, the agreements are done. Then the DPUC <coughs> will instruct Cablevision to turn the $60,000 over to Soundview, and then we'll be able to administer that program for you. So that's 
it in a nutshell. Um, if you'd like, I have a copy of the proposed incentive program if you would want me to read it to, to what we're looking for. Well, let's for. first ask a few general questions because Great. I think um, it, it's good to hear you talk about the phasing of this. The scheduling needs to be firm. And Correct. I think I heard you say all six towns need to have settled on schedule. Correct. Okay, Correct. now does other towns' schedules impact our schedule? No. Okay, so when, when we give a proposal to you of what hours, what block of time we want to see in a a one-week period, a month period, what, what kind of format would you like to see this in? If we say to you how many hours per week? It's going to depend on how much programming you have. Right. Now, is what there a the formula as to how much programming? I mean, what we've been doing is 24-7, we have programming set up so that Monday is Woodbridge Board of Ed, and we play Woodbridge Board of Ed content then. If there's a budget hearing involving the Woodbridge Board of Ed, it gets put into that category as well. Tuesday is the Amity, the Regional Board of Ed. Wednesday is our Board of Selectmen, and we go live when there's a Board of Selectmen meeting. That's twice a month in the evening, and usually mm -hmm. it's all evening long. Um, Thursday is our Board of Finance, and Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, we usually put the most popular programs that we have mm -hmm. in rotation on. Or if we're doing you know, an overview of the budget, we'll do a budget marathon all mm -hmm. uh, weekend long. People are used to that. It's been a couple of years now that way. So I think that we've got content that our community views as satisfactory for 24-7, okay. You won't have 24-7. Right. The reason being so the department. now we need to kind of back right. into what, what you're offering. Right. You. What we would suggest is the schedule that you're proposing and what you right. have can continue. Right. Not for 24-7. Right. What will happen a is... hours a day at least. As long as you... Right, correct. Mm -hmm. uh, it, what we're looking at is original programming, and we're really not looking... We don't really count an event calendar or community bulletin board. That is not high on the list. Yeah, we've been repeating. adding it in behind. Um, we call those things. fillers. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But Fill out the rest of the hour. if you want to, for example, I'm going to use the town of Stratford as an example. Mm -hmm. The town of Stratford, what they do is they have their... Um, board of their, their town council. They use town council, so I have to mm -hmm. okay. think about town that I'm in. They have, first they run a little community bulletin board. And that community bulletin board probably has about 7 to 15 minutes of original events, and mm -hmm. they might play that for an hour. Mm -hmm. Then it moves directly into their public comment section, and after that, they move into their city council meeting. And that block of time, so for example, today is Tuesday, they're going on tonight at 11 p.m. That whole block of time will be played, you'll see in Stratford meetings. Now, if, we, if, if there were an issue in Stratford that we wanted to tune into, we wouldn't have to play it at the time it's going to Stratford. We can We have the flexibility. You have the flexibility because we, their, their designated, quote, time slot mm -hmm. is technically Thursdays mm -hmm. from right. 7 p.m. on. Mm -hmm. We repeat that Friday. Saturday, Thursday. Sunday, and Tuesday. We don't uh, do it. Do we have to catch it at a time you're repeating it, or we can um, just you, order it up for? Well, depend. I think Saturday it depends. Night. I think I think if I could suggest mm -hmm. something mm -hmm. here, it seems to me that the the easiest thing to first determine when you have live programming, that's got to be a must carry for mm -hmm. you folks, right? Mm -hmm. right. So and I we're think gavel to gavel. So mm -hmm. even when they go into right. executive session, we can't cut away and put another right. program in there. Come you would, they wouldn't have to because what we right. would be doing at that time for your live meeting, let, let's, mm -hmm. let's, let's, uh, let's talk live so meeting so since that's, you brought up. So that's sure. going to be an override. Live exactly. meeting would be an override that pr would be done from here probably, and if it interfered with the Stratford thing, Woodward Bridge would be seeing their Woodbridge meeting. Right. They would not be getting So we have the capability to, 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 you have the capability to narrow the cast. cast. Yeah. Oh, yes. It's just yes. Woodbridge. Yes. Correct. No. Yeah. It's, but, well, you know what? It, but if it didn't interfere in other towns, uh, we, we would want to also have it let other people, other people other would see, see it would, as well. Would see it as well. Mm 